To continue now, we have to Professor Mauricio Sepulveda to introduce to Professor Felipe Chavez. You can start, Mauricio. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Juan, and thank you for the opportunity to present uh, the next uh, talker, Felipe Chavez, uh, uh, which is uh, a professor from the uh, University of Paraíba in Brazil. And um, he's an expert in uh, controllable, controllability and uh, EDPs. And now, uh, Felipe, uh, talk about the uh, uh, switching control for parabolic system. And you can uh, talk, Felipe. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mauricio. Juan, okay, posso começar, Juan? Vai gra gravar? Vai gravar já? Yes, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, will, I will start my talk. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me. It's a pleasure to, to present my work here. I have been watching, several, attending to several lectures and uh, all of them are very nice. So it's, uh, I'm really glad to be uh, attending and showing what we have been doing uh, recently, okay? And uh, this is a joint work with Professor Diego Souza, which is here, and Silvana Verdosa from Bordeaux. Okay, and uh, we are going to, we studied a problem which is quite simple to understand, which is the problem of switching controls for parabolic systems. I, I will detail this in in a minute. Okay, but I will start with a motivation. Okay, to our work. Okay. Uh, Okay. Ah, okay, yeah. The motivation is as follows. So, so suppose you have the, the stock system, okay? So in R3, so we have uh, three components for the velocity field. So Y is my velocity, velocity field. So it has three components, Y1, Y2, and Y3. And here U is a control which is supposed to act in a small, subset of the domain, okay? P of course is the pressure, okay? So I have the stock system and here, so it's just to, to be clear, I, I am working on a domain omega and my control is acting in a small subset, okay? And it's well known, okay? I won't enter much into details, but it's well known that if you consider the stock system here and you try to, to, you fix a time T positive, and you try to send, to find a control U that send the solution of, I mean, all the three components to zero at time T. So you want to send the, the fluid to rest at time T. Then it's possible to, to, to choose a control that drives the solution to zero in any time T, and this control to have only two components. Because you see here, I have three components, three equations, coupled equations, of course. And what we, um, uh, we can prove, which is very classic by now, is that you can find two controls, two component controls that send the whole solution, which is y1, y2, and y3, to zero at a given time t, okay? So this is classical in the, um, people in control are familiar with this. So in particular, you can, you can think on a practical example. So you have here the equation in R3 again, of course, I'm not changing. So you can control with two controls only. Okay, so you have three equations and you can control with two controls, okay? So it's, uh, this is, can be done by Kalerman estimates. So uh, this is not the, the aim of the talk. So I won't enter too much into this, okay? So, however, a natural question appears here. Okay, so I can send the whole solution to zero, the three components to zero at time t by means of two controls, UI, U1 and U2. Now that you may wonder, okay, so what if I try to erase one of these two controls? Is it possible to find only one control, either Y1 or Y2, that send the solution to zero at time t? 
Okay, so instead of two controls, I want only one now. And this is uh, by now well known as well that this is not possible in general for the Stokes system. So you can drive the solution to zero by means of two controls, but if you try to send only with one control, this is not possible. Okay, so with two controls you can, and with one you cannot. Okay, so this is in general at least you cannot do it. So, of course, here uh, just a comment that, uh, of course, here I'm dealing with the stock system. This slide here is dealing with the stock system, so it's a linear system. And uh, those familiar with uh, control knows that uh, for another stock system, this kind of result that is possible. I mean, you can control another stock system with only one control in R3. So if here I had the Navier stock system, which means that I'm adding a term like this in the equation, then it's possible to drive the solution to zero by means of only one control, okay? Of course, this is, you need to make use, the make use that you have a nonlinear term and this generates a non-trivial dynamics that allows you to control the system with one control, okay? This is the Coron's return method, it's, uh, it's very, very nice work and it's uh, possible to, to apply coronary methods when so at least sometimes when you don't even have controllability for the linear system which is the case here so but here i'm focusing on the linear case so the linear case i cannot control the stock system with one control okay so we can control with two but not with one then there is a, a intermediate question which is the one that we are interested in this talk, when the, in which is the motivation for our work, which is the following. So uh, imagine now that you, you, can, you can choose controls, you wonder actually, if you can choose controls in such a way that at each instant of time, only one control is active in, in the equation. So, what you want to do now is the following. So you have, for instance, here, when you have two components, so we know that we cannot control with one globally in time. But our question is, okay, but can you control at each time with only one component? So for instance, in a, time, in a T1, you have only one U1 acting, and then in, in a time T2, you have only one U2 acting. So you have, globally, you have two controls, but Simultaneously, they cannot act at the same time. Okay, so at the, at the, somehow you have only one control at each, each time. So it's very, uh, very much easy to see that this is really an intermediate case. Okay. I don't have two global control, global controls. Let's say I don't have one global control, but I have two controls which act as each instant of time, only one of them is acting on the system, okay? So this is the, the question. Actually here I wrote with three controls, but uh, of course uh, it's just because uh, I put in the general framework, but of course uh, here for the stocks, I can have only one U and U2. So the question is find a control that at each instant of time, only one of them is active, okay? So at that, at each time, you have only one component acting on the system, okay? Which is it's a very nice result because uh, Leon's was the result say that you cannot control with only one. But now we are saying that you can control with one at each time, not globally, okay? The control is not, uh, uh, the component is not acting globally alone. So it, it must have the other components, but at each time you have only one. Uh, control and they, this is the the, the, the so-called switching control strategy okay because you are switching from one control to another okay so uh, this is this is the idea so you want to control a system which with controls which are acting not together but at different uh, times okay this is the motivation so you see that this is a really a really interesting uh, motivation and now i will go back to 
before uh, okay so before i start the, the abstract framework that we, we work let just uh, let me just say that this uh, switching the strat type of control strategies it's we use the many 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 applications in biology in particular that you can find you can find plenty of them for instance in this work in this review short in the laboratories they gave they give a lot of uh, reference for these kind of problems and applications in biology and traffic flow and uh, space spacecraft and so on so it's a really nice work and but actually I'm, i will focus only on the problem on switching controls not switching states okay because for instance you have y1 y2 y3 new stop so you can you could think of switching about states as well but uh, here i won't deal with that for those kind of questions you can you can see uh, the paper of Lugerin, okay, and collaborators, okay, they, they, they deal with this kind of, of questions, okay. So our work uh, is very much inspired by the, uh, by the work of Zua Zua in 2011 for the case of uh, switching controls for distributed systems, okay. So in 2011, Zua Zua wrote a very nice paper in Journal of European Mathematical Society in which he uh, it address this kind of problem and uh, bring people's attention to, to this problem in, from a control theory point of view and uh, in which we are interested here. So, okay, so you see it has been 10 years, 11 years, and uh, we have managed to, to improve the result of Zuazua. Okay, the result of Zuazua is quite simple. If, it's a long paper, but uh, it's quite simple actually so there is not much difficulty in there but it's a very really nice he gives many many ideas as always as what does in his paper so it's very nice to read but it's not profound in the sense of the results are not deep okay so this was our idea to get more uh, results than the ones of those because he was he wasn't only interested in the concept not in my in many results and the, so he has not many many mathematical results. Okay, so uh, this kind of problems of switching is also very important in optimal control. But I won't enter into that. For instance, one can I didn't mention here, but one can find uh, some papers of uh, Karl Kunish where he works on these kind of things. So, but I will focus on uh, from a control point of view. Okay, and here now I will just formulate my problem in an abstract framework. So now I want to take what I formulate for the stokes and put this in an abstract framework, okay? And uh, here uh, is my system, my control system, okay? Y prime plus AY equal to BU. So it's quite general. A in principle is just a, uh, oh, minus A is just the generator of a semi-group, a zero semi-group, okay? But it, in particular, it can be a matrix or whatever. B is a control operator, which is supposed to be linear. In principle, it can be uh, bounded on or unbounded, as you, you see at the end. Okay, there is no problem. And here I will work on the framework of hybrid space. Okay, so H is a hybrid space, U is also a hybrid space, and I will sit for controls in L20T U. Okay, so. I have my system, my, my, uh, an abstract control system, okay? And now I want to formulate this problem, the problem of switching controls to this abstract control system, okay? So uh, let me do that. For, to do this, so I need to be a bit careful because you see I have to, to explain a bit how are the two, for instance, with in Stokes, how the two controls that I want to act, uh, how, to, how to, to write this in, a, in an abstract framework. So uh, I will to do that, I will suppose that uh, we can identify the space U with uh, two other Hubert spaces, U1 and U2. Okay, this is very, this is a, just technicality, but okay. You just write U as U1 times U2. And then you, your operator B will be just B1, U1 plus B2, U2. Okay, without further for the technicalities, this is what we are doing. So what we are doing at the end is writing 
our system in this abstract way with now two different control operators, V1 and V2, of course, apply to V1 and U2. Okay. And uh, then our problem can be can be simply written as find a, find controls u1 and u2 here find u1 and u2 such that at each time only one of them is active you see and the solution is zero at time t okay of course here this is this basically means that at each time only one of them is active okay or trivially, or trivially, both of them are zero, but this is not interesting at all. So basically one of them must be zero, okay? So uh, this is the abstract way to write this, uh, this problem, okay? So uh, you see, it's very simple once you write in an abstract way and understand that you must just, uh, Write the, 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 the spaces as the product. It's quite easy to, to, to write, to formulate the question. And now uh, one wonder, you know, of course, what can we obtain in general for this kind of problem switching control? Okay, let's go back to the, to the Stokes problem. Of course, uh, if I could possibly control with one control, this question of switching would be, wouldn't be interesting at all. Your control would be only U1, for instance, and you wouldn't have U2, so U2 would be zero. So the, the, this question would be trivially satisfied. But of course, for Stokes in 3D, I, don't have, I cannot control with only one control. So the, I need to find, for instance, U1 and U2, of course. But there is another thing that you can infer which is that, for instance, if the stock system was not, if I knew a priori that the stock system was not uh, controllable with two controls, I could not ask, for instance, that the two controls to be uh, switching. Of course, because you cannot control globally with two, then you could not ask for switching. Then you need to, to before starting to study the switching problem, control problem, you need to know something for, something for your abstract system. Okay, you need to know something a priori. Okay, because uh, if, I, if I cannot, for instance, if I have a system of uh, two equations and I know that I cannot control with two equations or two controls, I don't have any hope to control in a switching manner with two controls because I cannot control globally. Okay, so I need to know something a priori. Okay, then we need to assume that and that's what we are gonna do. So we are going to assume that we have something for our, our system, uh, original abstract control system. Okay, we, you, you know something, and that's what we are, mm. are going to do. Okay, and then under these assumptions, which is basically, for instance, because in the case of Stokes is, we must know that we can control globally with two controls, because otherwise you couldn't expect switching, in this case, with two. So, this basically will be the assumption. Imagine that you can control the system with globally with full set of controls. Then can you find a switching strategy for this full set of controls? So this is, this is the point. So in terms of stocks, we know that we can control with two controls. Now we want to build a switching strategy for these two controls, okay? Then, Indeed, translating this into the abstract framework, we will assume that the system is no controllable in arbitrary small times. Just as I said, it's quite natural. And that's to say that for any T positive, you can find a, a control that drives the solution to zero and the control is continuous with respect to initial data. This is the assumption. As I said, very natural, nothing uh, strange here, so don't worry, okay? Nothing strange, natural to assume this, otherwise to study what we are trying to do would be impossible, okay? So this is the assumption that we have that 
You must know how to control your, your system with the, a full set of controls. Of course, in a continuous manner. Okay? Then, of course, this assumption, which is assumption of new controllability, is its equivalent to an observability problem or property, which is, which means uh, briefly that you can recover the whole solution at time zero of the ad, uh, of an adjoint of the adjoint system by uh, true observations of the solution Z by means of the observation operator B star. Okay, so recall that uh, here in my in my in my abstract system, which is the one that I'm assuming I can control fully, let's say, I have BU. BU is the how the control is acting on the equation, right? So when you go to the adjoint, you need to be careful. In the adjoint, you don't have B, but the relation between B and the adjoint system is that you want to observe the whole solution Z of the adjoint system at time zero by means of observation through the operator B star. Okay, so this is the classical observability property for new controllability. Okay, so, uh, and why this is important? Because in our proof, we will use uh, that we know how to obtain, or we know that this inequality is true because you are assuming that you can control your system fully. Fully, I mean by a full set of controls, okay? Then, this is our main theorem. Okay, let's, let me briefly explain. So I assume that my system is no controllable. Okay, so I mean that I can control my system by means of a full set of controls in arbitrarily small times. So at each positive, no matter how small it is, at any positive time, I can find a control that drive my solution to zero. And moreover, I will assume two things, but not at least one of the two things must hold. Or either H is a finite dimension of vector space, so we are working on finite dimension of vector space, or either A is a self adjoint positive definite operator with compact resolvent. Okay, so I assume that my system is no controllable and my system is either self adjoint positive self adjoint with compact resolvent or H is finite dimension. Okay. And uh, if B is linear, C it's important. B is not, not uh, I'm not saying that B is either bounded or unbounded. It doesn't matter. Okay. And if I can write, of course, U as a U1 product with U2, and B1 and B2 as before, I mean, B is B1 plus B2, then I can control my switching control problem, my switching control solution to zero in arbitrary, arbitrary small times, okay? So under the assumption that the, the system is controllable with full set of controls and the operator A is well behaved, let's say, I can control with a switching strategy, okay? It's very, very nice because now uh, this, these conditions in practice are very easy to, to, to check, okay? So it's, uh, well, okay, <laughs> at least I'm saying very easy, but uh, I'm lying because we know that I, even with a full set of controls, it's mostly difficult, but at least in several cases we have, uh, we can check easily these assumptions, okay? Because we know that easier to try to study the problem with a full set of control. Okay, so uh, let me just give the idea to how to prove this. Okay, I won't enter too much detail. The proof is a quite, is a bit technical. Okay, the proof is a bit technical. Then uh, I, I will just explain the ideas, okay? To be, I will be very, very quick on this because I want just to focus on applications. Okay, so just to summarize, 
given at the end, given any time to positive and in initial condition, you can find two controls, for instance, or two or controls U1 and U2, such that the solution of our switching control problem is zero at time t, and the controls U1 and U2 satisfies the switching condition. Okay. So let me just explain the idea of the proof. And uh, here, our proof is very much inspired, but not equal. That's, that's very important to say, because, uh, because as I said before, Zua Zua could not manage to extend his work to uh, in, a, in a general setting, let's say. And uh, here we managed to do that, okay? But our proof is inspired on his, on the, on the use of a functional of this form, okay? So uh, the idea is to minimize a functional like this one. And here I just, on passant, I just say that if for those who are more familiar with control theory, this is very much like what you do when you try to, to work with bank bank controls. Not exactly the same, but it resembles bank bank controls, right? And if you think about it, it's natural because bank bank controls is you have a control acting for some quite time, and then after that, the model controls takes place there. So it's quite it's quite natural. So that, that the two the two things are related. Okay. So the idea is to minimize this functional here. But check, pay attention that here we introduce this guy here, alpha of t, okay? So alpha of t has a very particular form, okay? And it's, uh, it's very nice because in the proof, so we need to minimize this guy before going back. We need to minimize this guy and find the minimizers and guarantee that the minimizers satisfy a, a switching condition. And the alpha here is the one that will make the switching condition to hold, okay? For instance, Zua Zua, he works on something like that, but he does not use alpha. He uses constant and it's related to some resonance effect that here we avoid and he could not, okay? Okay, but similarly, okay, so you want to minimize this functional and at the end, imagine that you, you, you minimize the functional and when you minimize this functional, you find, let's say, two controls or let's say, uh, B1, let's say B1 star Z, let's say, and B2 star Z. They are the two components for the control which will make the U1 and U2. Since you want them to be switching, the only difficult part then to show that the solution related to the minimizer goes to be zero at time t is not, uh, it's not at all difficult, but the difficult part is to show exactly the switching condition, which at the end of the day, you just need to prove that this set is of measure zero. And see, see how interesting this is because Imagine that alpha, and then, okay, and then you, you take, you use the fact that alpha has this particular form, and then this implies in particular that you, your two, two components are switching strategy. Of course, uh, here just as a remark, of course, your minimizer could be zt equal to zero, but in that case, this set would be a, not a, of measure zero, but then your control will be simply the control zero. So you, you don't have even to act on the system. So this is not interesting at all. So in the case of in that the minimizer CT is not zero, then you need to show that this set is of measure zero, okay? And, that, and that, uh, that's a little bit of work. And you need to use here, you need to use the analyticity of the semi-group. So that's why we are only able to obtain results for parabolic type system. And here we moreover need to use the fact that alpha is analytic and it's oscillated at infinity. So uh, it has, we avoid the resonance effect. 
for the solution because the, the, the two components, sorry, the two components would resonate in the same frequency and then you could not see that one one when when one is zero, the other one is not zero. So then you need to guarantee this. And then this is the the, the role of alpha in, in, into the game. Okay. So this is the general idea. So and uh, it's important to, to, to mention here that the, the idea of Zuo is also to show that a similar set as this, not exactly this one, but a similar set is also of mid measure zero, okay? Here, of course, we propose a general setup and uh, we in particular generalize as was as recently. And uh, as I said, he is only able to treat some particular case, but in finite dimensional settings, for instance, he, uh, needs to assume he's not he, he not, does not use alpha t but he uses some constant and he needs to assume some kind of Kalman run condition of this type that a b1 means alpha minus some constant b2 and I, a b1 plus some other constant b2 that these are this satisfy common run condition okay the alpha minus and alpha plus doesn't matter but just uh, that he needs that this two the systems to be uh, to satisfy common run condition. Okay. And in particular, Rosua's result is not so profound, as I said, because for instance, he cannot treat very simple systems as this one. A equal to zero, P1 equal to one, B2 equal zero, one. So what you are saying here is that you have Y1 equal to your U1, or oh, sorry, Y1 prime, equal to u1, it's an ODE, and y2 prime equal to u2. So you have two equations which are completely decoupled and he cannot, he does not know this, so if he can control with a bank, bank or oh, sorry, with a switching strategy. And in particular, our strategy works for our system, okay? For this system. So we greatly generalize Zua Zua's result. Okay, so this is very, very nice. And uh, Zuzu also obtains some simple stations in, in, in infinite dimensions, but however, it's important to stress that the hypothesis of Zuzu can only be checked in 1D, essentially. What he did is not applied to MUTD, it's very difficult. And uh, he says a few, he, say a few, he says a few words about MUTD, write some things, but uh, he does not obtain much results because his conditions on the infinite dimensional settings is very difficult to, to obtain, okay? He, he, he works on the heat equation, it's very complicated. His hypothesis is okay. And then we wanted actually, our, our idea was to simplify this hypothesis and we, we managed, okay? So in, in, in conclusion, uh, our argument, right? We avoid this kind of spectral requirements in the work of Zua, Zua and we generalize his arguments to treat more, more general, more cases. And uh, our work is important again to stress that our work is different from Zua Zua's work. Okay, even though it seems uh, quite similar, but it's different because. Our idea managed to deal with cases which he could not. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is what we did. And to finish my, my talk, I will give some example to show the how how this kind of things could be applied. Okay, I will give three examples, three simple, simple examples. So my talk is actually very short, as you can see. And uh, for instance, the first. The first example that uh, I want to, to mention is in, in, in finite dimension. And I will take a system here, A is a matrix. Okay, A is a matrix. Y, of course, is a vector. And I put a, a full set of controls, U1, U, D. In this case, B is a, is a full matrix there, B1. Which you all 
uh, which has all, mostly all components. Okay, so I want to apply our result this of switching. And here you see that it's easy to see that this system is, of course, I'm working on finite dimension. So exact controllability and no controllability are the same. So it's easy to see that this system is no controllable. Okay, exactly controllable I wrote here, but it's no controllable. Okay, this, the argument is given here. You just take the, final, the initial and the final state and drive in force a function to go from Y0 to Y1 and take the, your control as the, the result, okay? It's quite simple to, to show that you can do whatever you want. Then what we are saying that this system is controllable to zero is no controllable with a full set of controls, U1, UD, okay? Then we can apply a result. We are in a finite dimensional case, H is RD. Then uh, here, I just need to, here I, I, I already did some generalization in the sense that I wrote the result for B1 and B2, but it can be easily generalized to a finite number of operators B1, B2, Bn, okay? So I will, I will do this here, assuming that the generalization is standard. Then here I have D operators B, so I have B1, B2, B, D, which we are in each one of these components. And at each on where EI is the i-th component, okay? Then we have this result, which is uh, simply uh, an, an application of our result for any Y0 in RD, there is this D controls, control function, Y1, Y2, Yd, that drives the solution to zero. And that at each moment, only one of them is active, okay? So what I'm saying is here, here I can drive this solution to zero that, so that by a family of controls, by a sequence of controls, that at each instant of, instant of time, only one of these are active, okay? So at a time, if you take, what I'm saying is that essentially, almost everywhere, take a time T1 between zero and T, in that T1, at least you only have one of these U's active. Okay? This is what I mean in this result. And uh, this is, of course, this, is, this could be, for instance, uh, applied to, uh, to the case of, uh, semi-discretization semi of, uh, for instance, of the heat equation, if you want, or whatever. So it's quite, quite, uh, quite nice. Okay, you can. And of course, here I, I chose, I chose a, a quite easy form of matrix B of couple of a control operator B. But of course, I could also put a more general. B here in which the pair A, B satisfies some common condition. Then you could also apply your result. So here I, I'm just giving an example in finite dimension, okay? Okay, so in this finite dimension has briefly uh, some application as the semi, semi discretization of the heat equation, okay? Okay, so this is, this is one of the application and uh, you can also, as I said, do with general matrix, okay? And another example, which is quite nice if one think about it, is uh, the problem of controlling couple systems of heat equation, okay? So here, let's say you have, to, to, to simplify, imagine that you have two heat equations. This system can be coupled or uncoupled, of course, through this operator P here, okay? Of course, here I'm taking positive, but okay, it could be even zero if you want. And I have a control acting on a part of the boundary here, okay? Okay, of course, the control has uh, N components. 
And we ask the same question, is it possible to control the system with a switching strategy? But, well, we need to check first the, the, the conditions of the theorem. But there is a nice, really nice application that, uh, or not application, but something that I, I want to, to call your attention is the following fact. Imagine that you have two heat equations, okay? A coupled system of two heat equations. And now you have only one boundary control, okay? So you have a, an equation for Y1 and an equation for, for Y2, and you only have one control acting either in some part of the boundary of Y1 or either in some part of the boundary of Y2 or Y2, okay? So if you have two heat equations and one boundary control, most of the results in the literature are in 1D to control such kind of systems. Of course, you can do some extensions by, by, for, by, for symmetric uh, domains in UTD, but essentially the results that we know for this kind of problems are in 1D, okay? Because of, mostly because we don't know how to eliminate boundary controls. So we need to use essentially moment method, basically, okay? Then here, what we are trying to do is now think of, of, of the following problem. Imagine you have two, two equations, two heat equations y for y1 and y2. And you, you know that with two boundary controls, you can control the system to zero. If you have two equations with two boundary controls, it's not difficult to show, or at least there are manners to show in, in any dimension that the system is, is uh, new controllable. For instance, you can use Kalerman estimates. So then if you have two equations with two boundary controls, you can, there are manners to check if the system is new controllable or not. Okay, but with one control in UTD, the problem is not easy. So we wonder, or we have asked the intermediate question is, which is take two, two heat equations and try to control with uh, two controls which act uh, switching, okay? And we showed that that's possible, okay? So here is, this, this is the, the, the theorem in a full generalization, but okay, you just think of two, j, j to be, or oh, uh, n to be two, okay, or oh, uh, j, sorry, j to be two, then what I'm saying is that if I have two heat equations, I can, and then I can control with two boundary controls, one for each equation in which, uh, the two are not acting at, at the same time, okay? So this is what, what we prove, okay? Of course, uh, pay attention that I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying the particular case of two heat equations, I'm not saying that I cannot control, I'm not saying that it's impossible to control two heat equations in multi D through one boundary control. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that since we don't know a general result for to check whether this is possible or not, we give an intermediate result, which is this one. Okay, this is just what we are doing. Okay, and finally, going back to our original question of stops. Now we have seen these two examples, we see that. Ah, of course, just before going that, of course, here I did for boundary control, but we could do also for uh, distributed controls, okay, for heat equations, system of heat equations. And of course, boundary controls are more difficult, so that's why I wrote this one. And uh, for stokes, we can prove the same result now in 3D, for instance, if you want. There is a Hilbert space. I don't want to, to, to precise which space, what is the space H, because uh, you need to write this properly, but there is this Hilbert space H such that for any initial data in that space, you can find controls. Here you can even forget in three if you want, you want you to, such that the solution of the stock system, the velocity field is zero at time t, solution is at rest. And at each time, almost everywhere at the, so the controls are switching. So at, at, each instant of time, at only one control. It, uh, sorry, there is an error here. Of course, this is equal to zero. Okay, so I maybe I ah okay here is correct. It's zero. So here, 
should be equal to zero, okay? So you can drive the solution of this top system to zero by two controls in which at each moment, only one of the two is, is, active, is active, okay? Okay. And uh, this is a very nice result. Of course, you can also write this for the boundary control of his Stokes system, but I don't want to interpret that because the technicality is even worse than this one. So I don't want to do that. Okay. And uh, also, uh, like before doing this remark, let me just say that in our work, we also uh, write something about the no self adjoint case. Here, remember that uh, I said that our result works on the self adjoint case. And we, we also try to do something for the no self adjoint. And we obtain something, but our conditions are so worse, are so bad, so bad that it's impractical. So they are not, uh, not of use. Okay, we get something, but in practice, you cannot check those conditions. So very recently, uh, it's a very nice paper by Badra and Takahashi. They improve our work to the case of no self adjoint okay? We did some conditions on no self adjoint but our conditions are not practical at all. So they managed to get some practical conditions for uh, obtaining switching controls in case of, uh, for, of operators which are not self adjoint and The conditions are very, very beautiful. You can check it here that his, their conditions is just that A generates an analytic semigroup, the spectrum is composed of uh, eigenvalues with finite multiplicity, and the roots, the generalized eigenvectors are complete in the space H. So it's very practical, very easy, and very, very beautiful. So uh, they managed to generalize our result, which we are very, very happy. And it's important to say, their proof follow us, our proof. So they take our proof, and at the moment that we could not use the assumptions or use that the operator were not self adjoint, they did some tricks from functional analysis and they managed to continue to, to, to follow the proof and the finish it for no self adjoint case under this assumption. So they, they take where we left and they continue, they kept going. Okay, so which is it's quite nice. They didn't give a new proof, they just follow us, paying attention that at the point that we could not finish, they did. Okay, and uh, just um, a few comments more. We could also think before your questions, we could also think on uh, no linear systems. And of course, since we, our proof uh, basically is working with the adjoint system and minimizing functionals, so we are working with uh, observability inequalities, it's possible to, to obtain the result of switching strategies also for at least semi-linear equations, okay? But I don't want to, to say anything on that because there is uh, not much important because we just, our important, our most interesting was the linear case, okay? But we can do some things for the non-linear, huh? okay? Then you can also do uh, some things on the approximate controllability as well. We, we wrote that in our paper, okay? And uh, you, can, you can check on that, okay? So I will, I think I will finish here. My, my talk, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's, it's due over. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Felipe, for your presentation. And uh, now, uh, I don't know, that there is some, some question. Yes, Christian. Thank you very much for the interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I have a question concerning the functional in Formula 11, is this functional J. And uh, could you say something about the properties of the functional such that uh, you have uh, the existence of minimizers? Yes, yes, you can do, you can do that, yes. because. And here you need to use the fact that your system with full set of controls is controllable. So you are 
basically needs to use this one. You have an SSR. Ah, yeah, so, yeah, 10, yes. Uh, yeah, this is, is like, like a coercivity condition. No? Yeah, exactly. So we, yeah. Under, under this assumption, you, you easily guarantee, or easily, but you can work yeah. and guarantee yeah. that the function is coercive, okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. There is other questions. No, uh, Felipe, a, a question. Uh, the, um, it, it is uh, the, the switch uh, condition. It's a it's a it's a it's a condition. Uh, to to the control and um, but it's a very nice uh, strategy to to control. Uh, uh, do you know for for to understand better? Do you know some example where it is possible to control without switching condition, but it's not possible to control with with the, the switch condition? No, we didn't manage to 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 do that because yes, especially because I. I I, I, we don't even thought about that actually, because all, all, all examples we had in mind were basically things like stoves and uh, coupled boundary control systems of heat equations. So, for which uh, we wanted the result to work. So I didn't think about that actually. We didn't find. We don't have. I, I wouldn't know by mind any result in which uh, it's not possible. Okay. I mean, that's a very good question, but I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Because you see, just uh, because basically you, you had to, to give, for instance, here, you need to, you, you, sh you should be able, or at least you, you in, in, in finite dimension space, okay, you are, you are lost, but you had to maybe find some self adjoint which is not a positive or something, but uh, I don't know. So you, you had to, of course, to, to find something like which does not satisfy this condition. Okay. So I don't know. I, uh, okay. Maybe maybe some. That's a really good question. Maybe maybe one could try to check for the generate operators or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I, 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 I didn't uh, think about that. That's a really good question. If we had an example, it would be very nice. Okay. Okay, good. There is uh, other questions. Okay, we thanks uh, Felipe for his uh, very nice uh, presentation. Thank and, you very much. Uh, okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mauricio, and thank you a lot, Professor Felipe Chavez, for your amazing 